Hello friends, welcome back to UiPath Expo Hub training. Today this is the first chapter on Excel automation. And we are going to cover first chapter of how do you install Excel application package in your UiPath. Anyways, that would be a default package, but still I would show you that. Second, we will understand the difference between .xls, .xlsx and CSV. This could be a general question. So that also we will cover and then when to use Excel application scope and workbook activities that also is a very important thing to know and then we will have a simple project demo uh, where you know we were covering a very important activity how do you fetch the row index so when you are inside a for each row you are running a for each row for a data table and somebody asks you let's say you are in the row 1 or row 2 if there is a condition or you have done something you know in the same row in the next you know in the new column you write some data so that is one of the challenge most of us uh, find and most of the youtube videos may not cover that particular part i am going to cover it in this video so please continue on to the video we will see so let me show you the demo first and then we'll get on to learning it so i have created a sample workflow uh, the job of this workflow is to read the excel file where it has got some data name email mobile okay so it will read all of this and then once it reads all of the data it goes to a google form okay and here it will enter the email address the name and the phone number and there's a bit of validation that i've created if somebody's trying to enter a wrong data okay so this uh, once it submits then it goes to the second row then does that for all of the rows okay so once the data is submitted it has to write uh, the status okay this is very important to know so let's say it is processing this particular row so once it processes this row it has to write it here then it processes this row it has to write the data over here so let me run the demo and then we will see how it works okay so let me run it So it started filling out the data and hitting on submit then it will do the same for the second record and is going to continue for all of our records. Okay. Now if you see it has you know uploaded all of this data and also has written the status data upload complete data upload complete right for all of the record okay so how to do that let's learn so the very first thing is in our agenda how to install the excel application package so for that all you have to do is open uipath and here in the design panel you have something called manage packages click on this and here click on all packages and you just have to type uipath dot excel okay and you will get this one so for me i have already have the updated version so i don't have to install it so that is a default one it should be up updated by any way in case you are missing or it has been removed by any chance this is the place you can install it but anyways it will remain a default package okay so once you do that then the we need to understand what is the difference between dot xls so let me tell you dot xls right in this is the version used in 2003 and older okay so 2003 uh, microsoft excel um, you know the, the version the the files were saved in this format dot xls okay that is for the excel excel file in 2007 microsoft has come up with new additional feature for excel so it's a new upgraded version and they have decided instead of keeping excel s you know they wanted to add another x to it so this is the newer or latest file format okay so this is after 2007 all the new versions which has come that has the for file format of dot xlsx okay and the dot xls is the old format 2003 and older okay this you have understood and dot csv what is dot csv it is nothing but comma 
separated value, right? So most of the database where our data is stored, that is stored in a text format. Because when I am saving a data in text format, that that takes very little amount of space in the hard drive, isn't it? If you have a lot of images, there are a lot of coloring and a lot of things has been done, then the file size goes up. So generally when, when it comes to an application database, they generally store the data in a text format. So that way it takes a less to less amount of data. And when you try to download any data from a database, for example, ServiceNow, okay, when you try to download any data from the database you will generally find that in csv format okay then you can do your color formatting pivot table whatever you want to do then that becomes now and you can save it in a different format dot xls x right you can save it in the latest format from csv to you can save as dot xls but again dot csv is nothing but any data downloaded from a database okay that would generally have a dot csv format so this two concept is clear now the next thing is when to use excel application scope now when i when i say excel right okay so in the excel you have got all the activities right and while using excel they recommend you to that you should have a excel application scope and inside the excel application scope you should have all the activities i'll tell you the reason but the same thing is not true when it comes to workbook so workbook doesn't require even though both of them serve the same purpose the workbook activities do not require a scope so why what is that why excel requires a scope right application scope activity and why workbook activities do not require a application scope i'll tell you so the excel application scope let me show you what is that excel application scope so if you type excel application scope this is the activity okay when you drag and drop this generally tells you which is that file you want to work on so you indicate the file path okay and then you drag and drop all the activity read range write cell whatever you want to do all the activities you can put so the benefit of that even though your excel is open in the background in the background it is still going to work right it is still going to work so that is that is the benefit but when it when it comes to workbook let's say i am using a read range activity the same all the activities will also be there in the workbook okay so read range so if you see there is a excel activity which has to be used inside the excel application scope okay and there is a workbook activity doesn't require simply you can drag and drop and it will function but here what happens the workbook path you have to mention here so in this read range if you see there is a difference this is the excel read range and this is the workbook read range so this doesn't require a path because you have already mentioned a path in the excel application scope and here it requires a path all the workbook activities requires a path and then what you want to do then you have to mention that anyways we will see all of this example but this is the what is the benefit what is the drawback with workbook activities is that if your file is open in the background it, it won't function okay so that is why we you know depending on your situation you can either use an excel application scope or think for a workbook activity so excel application scope makes it easy because i don't have to mention the path every time i do it right for workbook every time i have to mention the path so this makes me easy while i'm designing and it's also safe right little safe because in case i have opened a file in the background then still it works so that is the difference guys okay so all of these three differences are very basic before we get on to excel automation so i think i hope this is clear now okay now for to show me this fourth point which is very very important to how do you target a specific cell while you are inside a four issue that is something you know we will understand so ignore that sentence for the moment and then we will understand slowly okay now what is my job my job is to let me clear the status read the excel file completely and then go to that google form and upload the data over here okay so that is my job to do that what I will do the first activity that I'm going to use is open browser 
so if you are a beginner this would help you so as i am doing please do so how do you create this google form that also let me show you what you do go to your google drive or you can simply say google form okay go to google forms and here you can click on google form free online okay forms here you can create a form go to google forms and you can create a form okay or else you can go to your google drive from there also new google form you can create so i have created a very simple form email address name and phone number that's all it's supposed to enter so what i'm going to do let me copy this and put it in the browser open browser so this is going to open and google form it works on ie as well but again it best works on uh, google chrome right because it's a google chrome form google form so i'll use chrome in the browser activity done after that what i want to do i wanted to read that excel file right from where i have to get the data and then write it so for that as i said excel application scope is the best one because i don't have to mention the path again and again if i'm using a workbook i have to do that so excel application is the best drag and drop the excel application scope go to your file path so this is my file open properties any which way you can do that you can also get it from here and then write the file name so i prefer this one okay and then go to ui path and mention that always in double quote done so that way it will go it is going to read that particular file done the next one i want to do is i want to read it right so i will use a read range activity drag and drop that and here okay so that see i have i have dragged and dropped the workbook activity okay so you have to be very careful so this one this is the one because it should not ask me the path okay this is the excel activity okay so i hope that you can make a difference now what you do copy the name so you can right click rename copy it and then instead of sheet 1 you mention the name of the sheet and i want to read the entire range the moment you read the read the entire range here you have to create a data table so control plus k so i will give a name read dt read data table so data table is a temporary right anybody who is very new they need to understand data table is nothing bad what is a data table so again it's a temporary storage of your excel data which has your rows and column right so simple in layman's language of excel data so you cannot copy that in a notepad right then your entire format goes here and there so it has to be a format which stores the excel format in a temporary format you know temporary way so that is called data table okay so this is going to copy and keep it in the same format having header having all the data all of that so that is called a data table so what i'm doing i just read the range m and i'm temporarily storing all of the data into a read dt okay after that i will use a for each row not for each okay for each row you have to use because when it comes to excel and data table for each row is the loop that you have to use and here i am going to put the loop to read dt read dt is my data type okay so once it reads the data so what happens let me let us understand this in very clear manner otherwise we will not be able to use for each row in an effective way so what i'm doing let me first show you let's see the how the for each row functions is very important so many would think okay for each row when i say it will first read rakesh kumar then email then mobile no no, no. it doesn't work that way what it does let me show you this is supposed to be very clear so what i am going to do i will say row because whatever the data table has the data it is going to fed it to row this is the for each row variable row so i will say row and inside this what i'm going to do i am going to mention let's say name this is the column right so when the for each loop runs it runs for each column separately okay you have to mention i mean it runs for everything but again you have to mention it which one you wanted to see okay according to that it will fetch so let me show you here what i'm going to do i'm simply say name okay dot to string
so what is going to happen let's understand that first and then we'll get on to other things so let me save it and run it so let's understand the first thing will it will open the browser then it does the excel application scope it is reading the data and then it is showing so this concept is very important then another concept i am going to cover it <clears throat> okay so if you see what is happening from my excel file when i say row in bracket name dot to string then it's going to pull one one data nagesh reddy james you see one one so that is how the for each loop works okay guys so you have to mention which column you have to you want to pull the data so now once this is done right so what i'm going to do i want to type that to into the google form so for that simply use the type into activity and indicate element inside the browser before that ensure you have kept the form in the background okay and i have some previous data let me clear that okay so here let me reload this page okay so all you have to do is indicate element inside the browser and here i am indicating that element so this is the email right so if i have to enter email all you have to say is row in bracket go to the excel file the way it is written exactly copy that come back and here mention it and then simply say dot to string okay so same thing you have to repeat for all other fields so we have got other fields like you have your name and phone number so let me repeat that okay guys so i have repeated that for email name mobile number then it should hit on the submit button and then once you hit on submit and submit another response that is for the submitting the another response that is how the google form works okay so once you hit on submit then it will ask you for the let's say let me enter some data let me show you what is that submit okay so once you submit what happens this is the page submit another response you have to click then it brings back you a new form again you can enter the second data okay so that is why you have to click click so this is the click activity type act type into activity simple so once you do that what i want the very critical thing as i said the fourth point how to write the data to target cell during the for each row okay so that means once you upload the data it has to say something like um, uploaded or upload complete something like that right it should write some sort of data here so to do that what i'm going to do let me show you how this works okay so for that the best way is to use a message box okay so what you do I am going to show which row index, so which row it is running, then I can use a row. So this is very important guys, pay attention. So what I am going to do, here I am going to write the first is your data table. What is your data table name? Your data table name is read dt, right? So all you do here in the message box, simply say read dt dot you can make a note of this, okay? Rows, this is to get the index, what is that index number? Rows dot then index of okay you have to remember this anyways the data table rows dot index of okay index of rows rows is nothing but your for each loop right you are inside the for each loop yeah so this is the row okay so you have to simply say row not rows row dot to string you can say otherwise it will also fine because we are inside a message box it's better to write to string okay so now so let's understand what it does okay so what i'm do doing i want to so when it is pulling rakesh k behra right when and then it is entering the email then is entering the mobile number then here it should write so what is that index and where it should write we should know right the otherwise you will not be able to access that particular cell and you cannot write it so to access that cell what is that formula is very important 
okay so you you may you made a note of this right read dt is your data table dot is the your method rows dot index of row dot to string index of your row row is nothing but coming from your for each loop okay whichever row it's running what is that index it's i just want to see that okay so i will simply run it and show you and then according to that we will make a write uh, cell activity and we will change it okay so this is very interesting so let's see that okay so after submitting the first one the first index is zero okay this is very critical to understand the first index is zero index of the row is zero okay and then it will show me one two three four okay so i will stop this i will stop the uh, submitting the google form so you will see it is coming one so like that it will go okay so now you understood how the read dt dot rows index of row works okay so what i'm going to do i am going to incorporate this into a write cell activity so what you do simply write cell and be very careful you are picking the workbook or excel you should be very careful so i am using excel one so write cell so here what i'm going to do which cell it has to write sheet which sheet the sheet name is this one so i normally prefer this copy and then replace this so the trick is go to you know you wanted to write that to d cell right so d2 d3 d4 like that it should write so for to access this cells this is very important to understand what you do go to write cell and here what you do we will make a small change so instead of a1 i'll keep as i'll make it as d right it is a d d plus your data table is read dt dot then you have to write rows tab then index of this is something you have to remember okay index of tab and in bracket you have to say row okay and then i have to add because the value is zero and i have to start writing from two right so zero plus two is equal to two so i will use a plus two and here what i'm going to do put a bracket for all of this dot to string i have to do okay so that way it will directly go to d2 understanding so this is the way so it will directly go to d2 and what i want to write you can mention upload complete okay done so let's run it and see now this data has to be uploaded automatically for me so let's run it okay so even though my excel file is open in the background right it is open in the taskbar it still is there's no problem it will but workbook you have to close it it will throw you an error you can test that okay so it is entering all the data for me okay if you come back to the excel file you can see the status has been updated so this is our first lesson we will uh, you know continue into more deeper understanding of excel automation please do like and subscribe guys in case you have not please do like the video please do comment your questions and according to that we'll come up with more interesting videos thank you for watching this you guys have a wonderful day thank you